something like an academy if you look at look at something like an academy they were born out of a youtube channel hmm so you want to probably start as early as possible got it got it partners yeah, yeah we we we've, we've raised our pre-seed round basically uh, we've raised about 900 Uh, a little over 900k 920 nice. 930k so uh we are still we haven't started working on coming out of stealth on any of the distribution channels we're still in that phase where we are testing the product but i think in the next two or three months as we go towards a public beta we were thinking that we'll we'll start growing our presence uh, on so, on all different yeah. channels so it's a bit like a seo Mm. uh what what happens there is uh, that uh, results will st- take time to show so you will probably not wait uh, before you start that and keep a education focus mm. uh and uh, over time uh, people will start recognizing your product because of the youtube work got it got it okay and I, don't don't limit yourself to one youtube channel as in try different things see what works try different things yeah. got it I have a couple other questions, but I'll save them for after the session because <laughs> I am sure you would cover that in the session. Hundred percent, a lot of things will be covered. Um, yep. I've been trying to like last time I did the session, it went for two and a half hours, so it was pretty oh, wow. crazy. Oh, wow! I've tried to cut down the number of slides, and uh, I there are certain aspects which I will run over faster this time. But uh, it's 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 a vast subject, as in we can go yep. into depth. Just how to produce good videos could be a two-hour session, right? So we we are trying to cover a lot of ground here. I'm sure. Uh, uh, but yeah, I I hope this is a useful session. So let me see if I can also get some folks to join from my uh, WhatsApp groups. Mm. Okay. Brilliant. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, uh, as in, uh, thanks, Ronak. Anyone else who wants to talk about what their expectations from this session is? Um. Yeah. So basically, the same the same kind of question which uh, which Ronak also has, right? You know, what yeah. kind of videos should we have? Uh, yeah. What should be the frequency? how much does yeah. gear matter uh, what should be the yeah. length of the videos yeah um yeah. editing what is the kind of cost that we can expect for yeah. per video and yeah. and where to find these kind of editing people is it <laughs> is it necessary to <laughs> to have like a i know editor full time or can we like outsource so many questions but again <laughs> <laughs> okay okay fair enough editors is uh, probably editing is not tough i do believe that if you're making videos you should try and edit some of your early videos yourself editing your own videos makes you a better creator initially and that is because what happens is when you're recording a video you may run over a few things you may repeat a few sentences you may um do do things which will make the edit, editor's job very tough and when you edit your own videos you realize what are the things you need to improve and you can relate to it much better so at least the first few videos you should try and edit yourself got it and which uh, editing software or yeah. is it like because these editing softwares yeah. are not yeah. cheap either right and even if they are not cheap there is a little bit of a learning curve yeah. as well so yeah yeah so uh, these editing softwares uh, so imovie honestly on if you have a mac imovie is free it's yeah. a very powerful software you can edit 4k videos there vertical videos as well uh but what i do is i mix i movie with a uh, canva i bring the text transitions from canva with a green background and remove the green background that makes it uh, look much better the default fonts uh, or uh, captions inside i movie I, i don't like them they're not as cool so i uh, at times i change them a bit uh but uh, if you want to be uh, if you're a little serious about editing as an art then probably fcp if you have a mac you can easily get uh, 90 days free uh, final cut pro uh, try that out Yeah, I have. The, I have FCP. Yeah, the industry standard is uh, Adobe Premiere, but it's a very—I don't like it. It's a complicated software. Yeah, it's not that good. 
same here fcp yeah. pro is amazing do you have any uh, uh, should i just <laughs> go to youtube to learn how to use fcp pro exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> learn on youtube yeah exactly but start with imovie start basic videos with imovie uh, i think you'll do pretty well with imovie as well and so uh, i've never edited i've edited maybe one or two videos on adobe but most of it uh, is uh, imovie for me okay and then of course uh, the thing is that the audio should we go with the lavalier or there needs to be yeah. boom or <laughs> yeah or, or condenser <laughs> mics like this you probably can't see my mic right now but um i think uh, if you have an iphone or a good samsung galaxy phone the audio directly into the phone is good enough the camera and the audio both are pretty good you just need a room which won't echo which won't echo your noise so it should have curtains and a lot of things which will absorb noise uh, from a production angle that is really a good thing to got it and now what's up with the the youtube shorts is it like <laughs> yeah. so, so here is the thing questions. i'm good sorry let's start <laughs> with the session you can start with the session okay okay fair enough yeah chalo theek hai so i'll share my screen uh, i think this this was probably better than the <laughs> slides but let me just go with the slides are you able to see the slides yes Um, yes. Okay. How does one know what is one sharing on Zoom? <laughs> How do I verify? Yeah. But I'm assuming you can only see the screen with slides, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So let me go full screen so here. So Zoom has this green hello on the screen that you're sharing. It does not show on my external screen. <laughs> That's the uh, thing. The green hello is not showing. It's showing on my own uh, box over here, which is on the. thumbnail but anyway you can see growing with youtube right now is is that the slide yes. you're seeing yes okay yes okay pretty cool so a uh, quick housekeeping uh, you can ask questions throughout the session but uh, probably i will take them um, uh, as in put them in chat for now i will let uh, shrikant and team uh, uh, moderate it but uh, probably every two or three slides i will open up questions we will not do it uh, uh, after every slide um A lot of things being packed in here, so sit tight. Uh, I'll try and answer as many questions. Um, if I need to translate something, please let me know. Uh, there are times when I may end up using a jargon, I may end up using uh, acronym which is YouTube specific, or I may speak in Hindi, which happens often with me. So please uh, so feel free to unmute and stop me there. Um, I'm not monitoring the chat or something, so if you find out that I'm not wearing my pants or something, even in that case, you can unmute and tell me. Okay, so fair enough. So why YouTube? right um how, how many of you uh, as an okay let me put this way a lot of you think or a lot of you already know that google search is important for a business or an individual or for any commercial purpose what happens with youtube unlike a google search or a facebook or even a twitter it does not make as much noise in the media for some reason so if you think about all the controversies that happen a lot of controversies happened because someone tweeted something stupid or facebook there was some misinformation happening on whatsapp or facebook we talk about talk a lot about the whatsapp university does anyone talk about the youtube university there is equal amount of uh, nonsense happening there as well it's a huge platform it probably consumes uh, like higher single digits of uh, the world's global internet bandwidth so that that's a lot uh and uh, i think i think as a marketer it's important to look at youtube today as a business it's important to look at youtube today because people are often uh, referring to youtube more than google search in some cases to learn new things so if you want to learn things like very basic things like how to make a upi payment people are going to youtube to learn that it's a very visual way of learning right it's very hard to teach someone how to make a upi uh, payment uh, with a web page or a long form how to article most people want to watch a uh, youtube video in their local language be it hindi tamil all of these are very very popular so uh, youtube i think is a, as a platform very important but to underscore how important it is i always like to do a experiment with the audience uh, throw me a random keyword right in my last session you know we thought of chappal or something like someone said chappal and i searched chappal and showed them how deep the topic could be so do you want to throw a random keyword at me to uh tell me to show you how much the depth around that topic could be anyone maybe shirt maybe mike anything you see around you or any kite thought flying. that you have sorry kite flying kite flying okay so let me try and bring up my browser here are you able to see youtube on my browser 
Yes. 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 Okay, you're able to see. So, kite flying. Let's just search that and see what happens. So we have a few videos here, and you see this single one. It has 13 million views, right? Um, and several of them, almost all of them, over here uh, has over 100k views. This has almost a million views, right? We can also do kite making at home, which is, was an auto suggestion there, and you see this video. It says 1.4 million views over here. How to make newspaper kite at home? 15 million views, right? 5.6 million views on how to make kite at home, and 3.5 million again over here. You, do you see the depth of views, content, and these are all user-generated content. None of none of them seem like uh, um, a celebrity. It is purely the power of content which is getting them so many views. Now, the interesting part is for everyone searching this on YouTube, the results would be slightly different. And uh, do you know how most of these views have come? And uh, that is uh, the second thing I want to talk about, which is that, hey, how was content actually discovered inside um, YouTube, right? We may think that, hey, uh, if you are on Google search, I may do how to make kites at home. And for almost all of us, this is what the result will look like. We know that if you do not make it to the first page of Google, you are probably not going to get any traffic. There are, there are jokes about hiding a dead body in, uh, in the second page of Google search results. And um, so, but on YouTube, I must tell you that most of these views have not come from search. Most of them have come from recommendations. And there are two or three ways in which people get recommended content. Of course, search is powerful. Search is an easy way to rank. But if I go into any of these videos and start playing them, do you see this suggestions on the side? On the right side, you suggest or you see these suggestions on a mobile screen to show below the current video. These suggestions bring in a lot of traffic. If I go on the home page. And if I've watched a kite video, I will see a lot of kite videos. They're already just, I've seen just five seconds of a kite video and they know this is a topic I am recently looking for. You see the first video over here. It's a kite related video. So do this today. Uh, maybe, you know, there, there's, there are very easy ways of creating a new YouTube profile with the same Gmail ID. So you just create a new um, YouTube account if you don't want to mess up with your original feed, but search for a video on knee pain. Right, and there will be millions of videos with millions of views. And watch any knee pain video for its full length, maybe six minutes, maybe 10 minutes. And for the next few days, YouTube will find you hidden creators, gems uh, around the same topic, which will start showing up in your home feed because nobody stops at watching one knee pain video or nobody stops at watching one video about a car which they want to purchase or a one, one video about a mobile phone which they want to purchase. They keep researching. And a lot of topics you may keep watching. If say it's a politics related content, I'll keep watching it forever. There will be new stuff coming up. And once YouTube knows this is my interest area, it will keep resurfacing great content from all kinds of creators on my home feed. It will keep showing up. And uh, that is how content, most of the views on YouTube come from, come, come from. So if you look at search, it's important, but that is a fraction. So it's not like Google search. You shouldn't think of YouTube as a medium where someone has already reached the top and uh, that's it. Uh, I have to displace that person to be popular. Uh, it's, it's, it's not a zero sum game in like a YouTube search result is. It is that there's a lot of depth and people watch multiple videos, recommendations is a big thing. And uh, people come to YouTube and discover new content. Uh, ha I'm sure all of you spend time on YouTube and you have subscribed, uh, subscribed to content. Um, if you look at my, my, okay, this is a test YouTube account. There will be probably no subscriptions here, but um, uh, one would think when I go to youtube.com, the videos I'm seeing are from channels I have subscribed to but YouTube uses your subscriptions only as a signal to show you content. But if you do not engage with a 
particular channel for some time, they will stop showing you recommendations from that channel. So subscription in a way means nothing on YouTube. Engagement is everything. Views is everything. Intent of the user coming to youtube.com is everything. Unlike Google, which is a search engine, YouTube is a publisher and their job is to hold you on their platform, on their website and show you videos for as long as possible. And they will do whatever to surface good content for you. So if I have watched a few videos around productivity or note taking, YouTube will keep finding related content, which other users are liking and show it to me and see if I like it or not. And uh, what is the doorway to a video? How do I know which video from this is good? People try and look at how many views it already has, but by, by and large, it is the thumbnail. If the thumbnail is catchy, people will click it. And for that reason, we often say 50% of your effort is the thumbnail. It has to communicate very well what a user would want or it should bring the user into it because if nobody clicks your thumbnail, they're not even watching your content. And after that, the first five to 10 seconds of your content is very important to hold on to the user. Most of your users will drop off in the first 30 seconds. So you have to tell them upfront what you're going to give them in this video. So yeah, that's how content is discovered inside YouTube. People are willing to watch long content. If you look at, as in search results over here, this one is 26 minutes, the mouse. The first knee pain video is close to 10 minutes. This one is 45 minutes. This one is 13 minutes. This one is four minutes, right? This one is five hours for some reason, right? So you, you, viewers on YouTube are not alien to long form content. They do not mind long form content. So you don't have to compete to impress them with a dance move in 15 seconds like Instagram Reel. But you have to definitely tell them what they will get in this video because there are far too many fake videos which go around on YouTube. Like the latest Batman movie is out and I'm pretty sure there are three hour clips on YouTube with Batman movie written on it and they have nothing inside it but trailers running on a loop. So people have been cheated enough by poor creators and a lot of spam that they don't have patience to wait for the seventh minute when you really give them value. You have to tell them upfront what they're going to get in this video. Video is a high engagement medium. Typically you are trying to hold an audience for an average of three to four minutes on a video. So uh, that's a lot of time and attention someone is giving you, unlike an article, which is easy to sort of skim through, or you can leave the browser tab open and go somewhere else. That does not happen with the video. So your responsibility to hold the user um, is much more, it's, it's much greater. So yeah, so why YouTube? and how content is discovered inside YouTube. Uh, that's something I've covered. If you have questions on this bit, we can take it right now. You could just unmute and speak. So, uh, you know, I uh, is there like kind of a search engine for finding out what uh, titles to, to write? Uh, you know, because people have like these yeah. clickbaity titles, which keep on showing yeah, me yeah, and, yeah, and that kind yeah, of stuff. Right. Yeah. So uh, give me an example of a topic. Let's do a live workshop kind of a model here. Like, uh, let me help you frame a title around a topic you want to make video on. Okay. Um, say Kanban board. Okay. It's a fairly technical topic. You don't have to be click as in Kanban board. Okay. <laughs> versus scrum board in yeah. Jira example, react JS game. Project example, React Design Dev, Kanban board tips. Yeah. I don't know if that's a thing, but let's see what people have made. So there is a three minute video over here too on how to set up a Kanban board. Okay. What is Kanban board? Agile coach. Okay. This is the Atlassian video. Okay. Uh, that's good. What is Kanban? Another video from Atlassian itself, which is 330K views again. There is a Hindi video. Kanban board to increase productivity, which, is, which has 24K views, which is very interesting. Scrum board Kanban, okay. Okay, so you know what? Uh, if I want to show up next to this video, right? This is clearly a popular video. What you could do is that, hey, five mistakes people make when setting up Kanban board. That will be a topic I will pick, right? It has set up a Kanban board, the main keyword inside it, okay. but it is, it is in, enticing enough for someone who has already seen this video to see come and now see your video. Uh, that's one thing you could do. 
So uh, point being that you're not trying to compete with all of them. You're trying to complement them in a way. So your content may be similar, but you may present it in a different way. Got it. Anyone wants to throw another example at it? This is a very important part. This probably is the most important part of the session. How, how um, important is language? Uh, what do you mean by language? As in the medium of... Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so you have to figure where the audience is, right? Uh, I make content in Hindi because I make videos on finance for the masses or blue collar jobs or these topics. But if I'm making something which is international friendly, which is for the startup crowd, probably you will do well with English. Right. And English should be fine. Um, I've tried making some videos for a US targeted audience, in which case I just focus a little on my accent. I'll try and keep it as a neutral accent. That's pretty much it. Got it. it not, not, nothing much over there. I think you will do fine check on that. You've spent time in US. And so if you're speaking English, you will be internationally accepted. Got it. Okay. Okay. So uh, Nishit had said, save tomato sabji, which I really have to search. <laughs> and uh, I, need, I need to also ask him to treat me to it soon. So save tomato sabji is 8 million views here, 1 million views, views oh, here, 2 man. million here. <laughs> Cooking is a big niche. Okay. Cooking is a big niche. <laughs> it's crazy. 1.9 million views here. As in, there will be at least 100 videos with 100K views on Save Tomato Sabji alone. Okay. So, cooking is a big niche. And I'll tell you one more trick in this since I've researched this topic restaurant style Save Tomato Sabji. Okay. That is the newest trend. <laughs> so, people are these days searching for that. Anyway, so yeah, cooking is a big niche. And Marwadi channels, South Indian channels, as in, uh, Gujarati channels, Hindi channels, as in everything will work in cooking. Cooking, uh, the good part is if you put captions, no matter which language you are explaining in, if it's a good recipe, people will watch it. So that's the thing with cooking. Any more questions for search discovery, how to frame your content, or we can just go to the next part. Yeah, Ankur, I have a question. So yes. while you're uploading a video, there's a section for tags. How helpful are those... Yeah. Adding yeah. tags to your videos, does that help? So your title, thumbnail, and content is 99% of the effort. Your description and tags is 1% of the effort. And let me prove it to you. So, so let's stay with Save the Mata Sabji. Open the top three videos. You see, there is no description here. It has put zero description. It's literally an empty box. And the video has a million views, right? So much for caring about tags and, <laughs> right? This one has, okay, this is some effort has been put in here. A lot of Amazon affiliate links, but uh, it has given the ingredients here, which one should, okay? It's, it's a basic hygiene thing and 8 million views, of course, but nothing great over here. Less than a paragraph, uh, very bad grammar in English and punctuations, all of, but it's still doing fine. Over here, he is probably, this person has not shown their face at all in the channel. And nobody does that in cooking channels, not necessary. And uh, nothing much in the name of description again. It's just random links thrown in there. So none of that is important. It's your thumbnail, title. And once a person starts watching at your watching your video, how, how well have you engaged them? Have they stuck around? That is important. So unlike Google, where Google has to guesstimate, will this be good content? And then they only get secondary signals on, will this, was this a good user experience or not for the user? Because, hey, if I search something on Google, I went to that website, I found something of value, I did not come back to Google. That's a positive sign. Maybe if I come back to Google and search for the same thing, it's a bad sign for Google. Google says, okay, this is bad. Uh, they, the person came back and searched for the same query again. And then they have all of sorts of complex algorithms in YouTube. They're probably analyzing it in a different way. Hey, I sent someone to a video. How long did they watch it for? They can measure it. Unlike what they could do on the web. Okay. So uh, was there something funny? No, no, no. no. So I was, uh, I was just showing her my YouTube channel and uh, <laughs> I, I made, I was make, adding like, you know, funny like, <laughs> videos and they have just gone like crazy. And all yeah. these videos are not. <laughs> tell us, the, tell us the name of the channel. We'll search it. Tell us the name. 
Yeah, uh, you do. <laughs> no. Okay, I'll give you. No. Nope. Yeah, Shrikant Pawar. And in that, you know, I made like a parody, like a funny video. Uh, yeah, just click on that. You see, you go. Yeah. yeah. You see that? Oh, oh, Jane Jana has got like what? <laughs> <laughs> okay guys <laughs> this is premiere in live <laughs> this should have gone viral yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> so yeah not hitting subscribe there and i'll explain later <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah no all the okay pretty cool okay so that's how content is discovered so what should you make uh, your youtube channel around so if you are a business you want to do it for a little broader uh, set of topics than what you are selling. Say if I am an HRMS software and I was speaking to someone who runs a HRMS software today, I was speaking to them. And um, uh, if, if I was selling HRMS software, I will not just talk about my software. I'll talk about good HR practices in general uh, because my audience is the same and I'll try and become an authority around that. Or say if I am of um, brokerage like a zero dha or a grow and grow has done a good job on youtube so in which case what i will do is i will um, make i'm still laughing and internally giggling about that video shikan but yeah <laughs> but sorry yeah. about that <laughs> <laughs> that's okay <laughs> so um so hey uh, if i'm a grow or a zero dha i'll probably make videos around top stocks to buy, fundamental analysis of a TCS or top mutual funds to buy this year or various kind of things around the market, which is not directly selling my software, but adding value to an audience who will eventually buy my software. And that's the way to get exposure. And of course, in some videos or maybe all videos, I'll have a quick five second call out somewhere in between saying, hey, by the way, if you want to invest in stocks, check out the Grow app, get 100 rupees if you install it today, something like that. So that could be done. Those call outs could be made. I'll give you, since this is a B2B session and I had it somewhere in my slides, but I'll give it away right now. I um, have done some paid campaigns for certain brands, integrating their content into uh, one of our YouTube channels. For, uh, for context, uh, uh, we run more than 35 YouTube channels, uh, mostly in Hindi, but some we are trying with uh, different languages as well, English, Marathi, maybe some Tamil, hopefully soon. So uh, what happens there? Uh, is that this job site wanted downloads on their app and they started sponsoring some of our videos. So I now have some idea of the funnel. Uh, so if it is a highly targeted content, uh, like, hey, uh, get a job in XYZ company, Grow or Zero Dha, and people watch that as a new, you've put a video out around that. And then you, in the video, you have said, hey, if you want to apply for this job, link is in the description or link is in comments somewhere in the middle of the video, you have said that as well, after giving details of the job opening and salary and all the details, the conversion rate I have seen for downloads is 5%. Views to downloads, 5%. Now let's put that in perspective. Um, if I get 10,000 views on a video, which is, okay, let's pick up Shikan's video. He got 2,800 views on that video. Oh, jane jane. Now someone tell me how many downloads, app downloads would it refer translate to 140, which is a pretty cool number. Now, 140 app downloads. What is the acquisition price? Does someone over here know what's the acquisition price of an app download today? And hey, this is a highly targeted, high quality app download because they have watched a three minute, four minute, five minute video to reach there. $10 per download? $10 per download. So it's $1,400 of value right there, right? But hey, let's just be say $5 or say $1, it's still $140 of value, if even if you put it at um, $1. Uh, and uh, I don't think your video production cost is going to go over $100 per video if you do it right. And uh, that is pretty cool, as in, ROI, as in you don't need a lot of views to get good ROI from good content. So yeah, fair enough. Uh, this question is often asked and a lot of you are considering your choice of being on YouTube after watching Shrek's video. So we should address this question, face or faceless, should you show yourself on camera or not? <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I have close to 2 lakh downloads on my own channel and I've been making videos since 2008, but I've never shown my face 
uh, on camera and be a proper YouTuber uh, speaking to the camera until 2020. And uh, I can tell you that uh, both of them work, but if you show your face on, uh, on in front of the camera, it's easier for the audience to relate to you. Just imagine if I was doing this talk equally passionately um, after watching Shrek's video, but with my camera off, Will you relate to me in the same way? Will you be able to uh, find yourself engaged with the content equally? You'll probably still find value in it. Here, the slides are shared and um, I'm speaking in the same manner, but probably the engagement will be little less. Definitely um, your subscriptions will be as in lesser people will subscribe. That said, I have managed to also seen good success with uh, channels where no face has been shown at all. And that's fine. If you uh, just make sure there is something dynamic in the screen. Um, either it's a good, uh, you know, it may be a simple PPT, but animations and some scribbling happening over it, take a pencil, draw something, explain things. Those kind of things will work. Um, I don't know if how many of you have seen Khan Academy or other teaching kind of videos. If it, a screen share with proper uh, teaching happening with a pen and paper on the screen, people can engage very well to it. So face versus faceless, both of them work just fine. From a technical perspective, please keep your resolution at least full HD. Full HD is 1920 by 1080. And uh, that's the minimum hygiene today. Today, any decent phone probably is 2100 or 2400 by 1080. So mm. your phones are now beating that resolution. So you better be that. If you can be 2K or 4K, even better. Uh, even if you're shooting full HD, uh, ask your editor to just upscale the content to 4K if they can. It will uh, not, as in for screen share kind of things, it will not distort as much. Even if it's a good camera, the footage will not distort as much. Okay, on that note, uh, on production uh, side, um, if I have to talk about production, your audio is far more important than your video. So the quality of your audio, the clarity of your audio is far more important than the video. So if my audio was bad, if I just move away from my mic and speak away from my mic, my audio, it may echo, it may not sound right. It may be very dull or the volume may not be enough. And we often do not empathize enough about the volume at which um, your content is audible. Try listening to a YouTube video with your earphones on in traffic while sitting in an auto rickshaw in India or being in a metro where there is constant train engine noise. It's very hard to listen to content at times. So your default uh, set of volume levels, uh, which we would find to be good and podcast level, probably would not be as good for someone outdoors who is trying to listen to you on the go. So test your content, test, you know, take, a, take your sample clip, go on the road and try listening to it and see if it is really a good level. So spend some time understanding good audio, send out a few samples. If, uh, open offer to anyone over here. Uh, send me a one minute sample clip and I will help you figure if the audio is good or bad. And I may even send back to you an edited version of it. But only if you do it in the next one week because inspiration is short. So act on it quickly. So, yeah. So, audio is more important than video. Um, give me a sec. Zomato is on the door. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So um, on the mic front, as I told you, using your iPhone internal mic is just fine, but Boya M1, if you can just search it right now, you will probably find it. A basic 800 rupee lapel mic is good enough. Oops, okay. A basic uh, 800 rupee uh, lapel mic is good enough for um, YouTube. Keep it close to your collar and speak softly as in the, the mic is catching your audio right here. So you can be passionate without being very loud because if you're screaming at your audience in a way, um, you're probably thinking of it as a seminar. The problem with thinking of it as a seminar is that when people are listening to you on YouTube, they want to, talk. it's, it's a, it's a one-on-one -on -one medium while it's a one too many by design as a platform. When someone is consuming your content, they are relating to you sitting in front of them and talking to them one-on-one. -on -one. So the tone and the manner in which you are explaining something, imagine that one or two people are sitting in front of you and talk to them. That is how it would work the best. 
So yeah, uh, natural sunlight coming from a window is best. If not, you can buy a basic ring light or umbrella light or LED light, or a, I'll give you a very basic hack, a 40 watt LED tube light in front of you, right? Behind the camera is enough. Generally, the tube lights we put in our homes or offices is 20 or 24 watt. Just put a 40 watt tube light there and it should do the trick just fine. Um, on which camera to use? Uh, if you have a DSLR, um, it is good. I like the quality of output there, but uh, your phone in most cases will do better than the DSLR if you have a, especially if you have an old model. So I can give specific guidances, but look for how, what is the autofocus capability of your DSLR uh, to see if you want to use that. I like the output from my Canon uh, really well. Any decent, ca decent Canon camera, even the mid-range ones have this dual pixel technology, which is pretty good. And if you put a 28 mm or 50 mm lens on it, that's fine. But uh, for all practical purposes, uh, even a 15 to 17,000 rupee Android phone does very good video these days, provided the lightning is good, as in the lighting is good. So video quality isn't as much of a problem, really. Um, you can buy a ring light if you want to make it better. You can put a LED light, all of that is fine. But camera isn't as much of a problem unless you have a very old phone. Right, so don't worry about the camera quality as much. So yeah, on the production aspects, we can probably stop here, take a couple of more questions and then jump to some of the other things. There's the matter on the door, so I'm still thinking about sale tomato sales. <laughs> okay, so production looks fine. So here is the thing now, I told you guys about the that subscribers mean nothing on YouTube. Everything is about engagement and how many people are viewing your content. And depending on how aggressively you have asked for subscribers in the video, uh, Carrie Manantri basically ends his video saying ki juta feko ya lota feko lal button dab jana chi. He's that aggressive to ask for subscribers. I uh, talk about, you know, uh, in my earlier videos, I used to give a 30 second call. I am on a mission to help 1 million people, this was all in Hindi, to do this, that, please join this mission, press the subscribe button. And now it's all, it's almost like a two second pitch. Okay, subscribe karenge or aage badenge, right? And then we go to the topic. So uh, don't bore people too much with subscribe called the start of the video. But more importantly, after you launch your YouTube channel, especially as a brand or even as an individual, don't go to your WhatsApp groups and send the link of your channel, go to your Instagram, Twitter, everywhere and invite subscribers. Subscribers mean nothing. You want people to engage with your content. Now think about this. I made a video, uh, uh, a sudden new channel made a video and shared it with a lot of my family and friends on WhatsApp. They will all clap. They will want to support me. They will open that first video and they will definitely hit the subscribe button, probably the like button as well. But if it's a 10 minute video, I assure you not more than 20% of them are going to watch the full video. What signal does that send to YouTube? That, hey, these people are only watching 20% of the content and they're leaving. And even worse, when I suggested them another video from this channel a week later, they did not even click on it. They just said, okay, great, Ankur is up to something, but they don't want to watch those videos because they are not interested in that content. Uh, asking someone to watch a video is too much of a commitment, right? They will not just do it because they like you, they will do it once. And that is where you have probably told YouTube algorithms that, hey, um, um, that this content is not engaging. People are not coming back and watching this content and you've just messed up the algorithms for some time. So um, my general suggestion is post good content on YouTube and let it float over there. Let it find its, let it find its own audience on YouTube. YouTube par hi apna audience unhe dhunne do video ko. Now, a lot of people have come back to me even after the last session, I emphasize a lot on this point and still people keep coming back to me. Can I share it with on my Instagram? Can I share it on my Twitter? I have a very focused group who are interested on the same topic on WhatsApp. Can I share it with them? The answer is hard. No, Nahi. Na. you can't do this. And the simple reason is that someone who is on Instagram is probably there for good graphics or 10 second videos or 15 second videos, or probably uh, they will probably not be good audience for YouTube. Someone who's on Twitter probably is reading Twitter threads. They are not probably watching as many 
videos you don't know if they are your audience on youtube and most importantly why are you underestimating the amount of depth already in youtube we saw save tomato sabji has 15 million views let youtube audience millions and millions of people who are watching youtube come and find you it is a great place to acquire new users a lot of brands use youtube only to put support videos about their product or to and or for a hyper funded startup create a 30 second television ad put it on your youtube channel and promote it with a few you know 1000 dollars of ad budget and then get a few million views on it and then invariably you have gotten a lot of subscribers who only wanted to watch the 30 second ad they will not engage with your long form video so think about your youtube as a community as a group uh, with whom you want to engage maybe for your support videos you can create another channel maybe for your ads you can put it on that other channel but when you are creating a youtube channel don't think of it like i will dump everything about my brand over there an academy runs 200 youtube channels and that is probably an outdated number grow probably runs more than 10 uh youtube channel so people run a lot of different youtube channels in different languages and you don't need to have all of those channels with your brand name it could be focused around the community which you are trying to curate on youtube so think of it in that manner i think i've demonstrated this enough that hey long videos are cool in fact i recommend that your videos should be at least 8 minutes long your average video length should be 8 to 12 minutes as in a minimum of 8 minutes at times for new channels i do not let any video below 8 minutes go live so long videos is what you have to look at youtube because that gives you good amount of watch hours on youtube and unfortunately youtube algorithm favors it a lot and a lot of you may wonder how do i make 8 minute content simple just go and search on youtube see how people have done it you can really do it well if i have to tell you top mutual funds um or top 3 mutual funds elss tax saving mutual funds to buy in india i can make a 8 to 10 minute video easily on it talking about the three funds i have bought what is their aum what is their holding like what has their performance been like i can talk about each of those funds for 3 minutes and you can even put chapters on youtube to directly link to them it is easy to create that content another reason why you think that long content is boring or people may not watch it is because you do not empathize with the beginner's mind who watch these videos just imagine people are searching for how to figure what is my upi id on google pay people are searching for very basic things so if someone is searching for how to do xyz how to say take a screenshot on my iphone of course you can't make a 8 minute video on that but say if someone is searching on what is a mutual fund or how to buy a mutual fund or how to research a mutual fund please respect that they have to come to youtube to search this they don't have the privilege of being around smart financial planners or what we take for granted because of our education and privilege they are really the tier 3 the mass india the ones who have gotten the access to internet uh, as a great opportunity and now they want to learn so empathize with them explain to them like a beginner dumb it down as much as you can because they are really beginners you need to empathize with them and find those audience there and that's another reason why your instagram and twitter audience does not port very well over here because you will probably start your channel with very beginner level videos and then you will go to advanced level videos so if i have to create a channel around say good hr practices or hr ms as we are talking about i'll first talk about very basic functions of hr then what is a payroll what is a salary slip i'll do very basic things and then maybe some day i'll go on to how to create hr policies right now what happens is the moment i create a video around how to create a good hr policy and give examples over there the experienced janta will come and relate to that content and they will subscribe but the hundreds of thousands of other people who my curated from nurtured from ground up what is hr what is a salary slip they will also now level up and watch those videos but if i start with hey how to create great hr policies and then i go and create content around what is a salary slip these guys will say why is this guy bringing me down to this level now and they will want to quit so you have to figure the progression of content on a new youtube channel start with the absolute basics build hundreds of such videos and then you go towards the advanced things and the initial videos could be search based what is a salary slip or what are top mutual funds or what is a mutual fund these are search based topics clear so far any questions at this point okay so pretty cool let's move forward 
I want you guys to understand some YouTube metrics. This is chart from a legendary YouTube channel or a very good YouTuber, right? Someone who I consider to be one of the best orators I've ever met in India or abroad. So this is a 11 minute video, as you can see at the bottom over here. The average view duration is five, close to six minutes, five minutes, 44 seconds. An average percentage viewed is 51%. What this means is if a thousand people have seen this video, on average, everyone has stuck around for five minutes, 44 seconds, and the average percentage viewed is 51%. And I'm telling you, these are legendary numbers. If you see the retention graph over here, after the initial drop, which is common for any video, nobody leaves. They just don't leave. They stick around till the end. It is crazy. This is kind of a graph you're looking at. For any YouTube video you have, uh, if you have a channel, there will be an option to go and look at engagement figures and this will show up under engagement and you lose maximum audience over here and then you fail to keep them engaged with your content. So how good was your content? You should measure it after at least a hundred views, maybe initial days, 50 views as well on that video and look for these metrics, average percentage viewed, average view duration. And I have a formula to help you with that. The formula is three, four, five. To be a YouTuber, to be a successful YouTuber, you need to hold people for at least 30% of your content and three minutes of average watch time. But if you are in 40s, you are a very good YouTuber. And if you are in 50s, you are a legend. As simple as that. The interesting part is even if you make a 20 minute video, you will probably just barely touch five or six minutes. Right, some of my 30 minute videos are at five to seven minutes. It's very hard to break that uh, number. Even if you make a longer content, you should make longer content because a lot of people will stick around for longer 30, 40 minute short tutorials and courses. A lot of those videos do very well, but the bare minimum is 30% retention. Whatever the length of your video was, if people are not even watching 30% of it, you need to improve something. If you uh, if people aren't watching even a minimum of three minutes per video, which means your video length should at least be 10 minutes for 30% to reach three minutes over here. Um, you probably will have a tough time being a YouTuber. There are exceptions to this. If I'm only making short tutorials, like how to take a screenshot on iPhone, I will never be in the three minute range. I'll be in the one minute range. That's fine. For most education related and for songs or also probably this will not apply because the song is typically four minutes. Or less so these rules will not apply but for educational videos kind of videos for which you will kind of videos which you will make as a startup as a brand to engage a community will be information oriented videos it will be education videos those will be 10 minutes so three four five that's the rule any questions on this i suppose not okay okay if you're thinking what video should I make, I need that killer idea to make a video. Please don't spend time thinking too much about it. Just make it just like Shrek did that. Oh, Jana Jana. he was not thinking much about it. And 2,800 people have watched it over invest in the thumbnails, right? Over investing in thumbnails is important. Try and make your thumbnails good. You need to spend a lot of time learning good thumbnails. And with that, I'll give you my five star approach, five star approach to being a good YouTuber. First, each video is on its own. So when someone starts watching your video, do not assume they have seen all your previous videos or all your other videos. So you may be repeating a lot of points. Say if I'm making a video on uh, fundamental analysis of a share a stock, say TCS, right? In every fundamental analysis, I may talk about that, hey, return on capital is an important metric and we should look at it. That does not mean you assume that people have seen my other videos and this time I should not talk about that fundamental thing which I want to analyze and why I'm analyzing it, right? So each video is on its own. If there are parts to videos, don't assume people have seen the previous two parts before watching the next part. So you have to construct your topics such that people watch each video on its own. The interesting part, when I make start a new channel, I say I'm making a um, video around what is a salary slip. I'll make the video on what is a salary slip and how to make a salary slip may be another video. But when I'm shooting this video, I will say, and aapne mera dusra video dekha hoga. you may have seen my other video on how to create a salary slip link to the same as in description. There may be nothing in description today, 
but that's okay. Whenever that video is created, I will put it in there. So that's that's uh, each video is on its own. If there's a question from Maria. Let me quickly read that. Okay, what's the maximum length you can go for a typical video, and what are your views on shorts? Will they answer? Um, okay, maximum view. I have done thirty minute videos and. At times, uh, I've seen very good 60 minute videos as well. Learn Excel, let's just search, search Learn Excel on YouTube. So, anyway, um, let's go back to the five star formula for now. I'll come back to that question. Consistency two months and 60 videos. So, if you're starting a new channel, make 60 videos, wait two to four months, and be consistent. And only then measure the results. Don't try and measure the results in days. It will never show up in days. You have to give it months. So, and you have to be prepared to make quantity. So that's important. Find basic topics, break it down. Like I tell you, what is a salary slip? How to make a salary slip? How to calculate payroll? And I'm talking about from that HRMS discussion I had with someone earlier today. So if you want to throw another industry at me, let's take sketch note, right? Why is note taking important? Tenants of a good uh, note, how to take notes during a meeting, how to send MOM after a meeting, how to send a discussion note before a meeting. All of these could be topics, right? How to create XYZ agreement, how to read an agreement. Well, they're, they're like hundreds of topics you can come up with within a span of five, 10 minutes. So break it down into many videos of eight to 12 minutes, create a lot of them and give it a few months. Retention in the first 30 seconds is the next tenant of the five star formula. So when I start a video, I have to reassure the user that they have made the right choice. So I do not start the video by saying, hi, welcome to my channel. I'm so glad you are here today. I was desperately waiting for you to watch my videos and hey, please, please, please subscribe to my channel, like it, order some food for me on Zomato and hey, follow me on Twitter as well and send me that invite on LinkedIn. I will probably accept it. Hey, <laughs> the audience has left. You start your video with Today we are going to learn about how to do good note taking and how it can change your life. I used to be a poor note taker. All of that you understand, you do your sales pitch in the first 30 seconds. Okay. And you tell them what you are going to tell them, what you're going to teach them in this video. And then you say, okay, do subscribe to the channel and let's move forward. That's it. That's your subscribe call. And you move to the main content after that. So your thumbnail your title and your first 30 seconds of the video are in alignment. And then please, after those first 30 seconds, stick to the topic and tell them exactly what they came for. Don't let mismatch happen over there. <clears throat> the next one is structure your video. That if I'm going to tell you how to take good notes, I'm going to structure it in several ways, right? So I'm going to first tell you, should I tell me a tip? But yeah, <laughs> if you're taking a note, hey, uh, Make sure you have a good software for note taking. Probably I'll put it as a third point. First one, if you're making notes, um, a pen and a paper is a good place to start with. You can digitize it later. You probably don't want to distract people with your keyboard taps during a meeting. Maybe that's a tip. The second thing is when you're making notes, uh, make it such that, hey, I, so basically, uh, you know, basics of note taking, what software do I use? What are the common mistakes which are made? and um, some benefits of note-taking. In this video, these are the five things that I want to cover. So I'll structure my video into parts. Or let me put a better example, how to select a mutual fund, right? So first figure, what are the kinds of mutual funds? Then you figure what is your goals or objectives? Then you figure um, what is the amount you want to invest? And then you figure how do I research and then come up with top three funds? And then how do I, go back and track performance of these funds at what frequency should I do it and some tips around that. But I've structured my video into several parts. And when I am, so basically that will avoid you from going off topic, rambling or forgetting points. So never write a script, which is the next one. In fact, is right over here. Never write a script, write the points which you want to discuss around the video. And after you uh, have that rough structure in your mind, you say, okay, the next point is this, the next point is that, and the next point is that. You just talk in different segments and all of them uh, gel very well together to create a good YouTube video. When you are shooting a YouTube video, unlike this uh, session uh, where it's all live, the good part is, or today we are going to learn about 
uh, how to um, okay repeat i'll start again from the start today we are going to learn about how to choose a good mutual fund we'll talk about ELSS funds large cap funds mid cap funds debt funds different kind of funds in this video now the point is after every pause i take and the next sentence starts i can you know this video until now is now preserved it's fine if i fumble something ahead i just have to repeat that sentence or that segment i don't have to repeat the full video and the pauses can be cut out the you know goof ups could be cut out easily that is the benefit of doing it on youtube versus a live thing and that makes your job much much easier because a lot of times i just scribble a few points and then i come up with analogies or examples to give right on the spot and if i goof up i just give a better example and move forward at times in post production i cut out a whole segment from my video said no this did not come out right and you can just cut it out and this is another reason why 10 minute youtube video can give you the same value as say a 30 minute or a 50 minute live session because it can be much more crisp and for that reason i have seen poor engagements generally unless the speaker is me i have seen poor engagement of zoom recordings or webinar recordings going on youtube anyway so yeah that's the five star formula um video closing if you remember this graph over here you see the steep drop at the end this this is probably last three or four seconds for most people that the end starts over here when another minute of content is left why does that happen because the moment you indicate the content is over people leave and then you should not hang around so if i say so today we learned that's it people have clicked they'll leave zoom everyone is gone <laughs> Today we learned means all the thing you wanted to teach is done. Okay. So to revise what we have learned, gone, people have gone, right? So the way I end my videos is basically, and probably I should do that with this session also. Okay. Um, so, um, is tarah se mutual fund hum khareed lenge. Okay, guys, see you next time. Bye. That's it. Right. As in, you don't want to stretch the ending too long. It is, it is just like, okay, bye. Right, uh, you want to uh, basically because the nature of uh, this medium is such that there's another video waiting, there's a WhatsApp waiting, there's an Instagram waiting, there are people on the phone, right? Nobody wants to watch your closing remarks for one minute. You have not locked them in a room and making them attend a seminar, so they will leave. So uh, be very crisp with your video endings. Reviving a dead channel, this happens often with brands, and um, <clears throat> what happens there. Is that hey, if you had a channel for a long time, there are 500 or 1000 subscribers, and then you're trying to re revive that channel, it's a very tough job because those subscribers have forgotten you. YouTube does not know how to throw your content in front of audience. Older audience will probably not engage with your content, they came for something else. So it's very hard to revive a dead channel or an old channel or a stagnated channel. You're probably better off starting a new channel, right? And there's no hesitation in starting a new channel. Channels can grow really fast, really soon. So don't worry too much about it. In fact, when you start a new channel, the whole point is your initial content will not be as good. The reason I told you Shrek that make 200 videos and you will be a superstar. The reason for that is it's not like you're going to do the same thing in front of the camera every 200 times. You'll improve yourself. You will get some feedback. You will try new things. You will become a better YouTuber. You will become a better presenter. And that's the whole point. It works for public speaking. It works for a surgeon. It works for a YouTuber that the more number of times you do it, you get better at it, right? And uh, if you are starting a new channel, the good part is for your most raw videos, rough videos, when you're not as polished, there were no subscribers to watch them or get offended by them or, you know, uh, not engage with them. And over time, you grow your subscriber base and you grow the quality of YouTuber you are. You are so it works very well organically. Quick things which you should not do apart from sharing your channel around, avoid using copyrighted music. Copyright is a huge problem. So just avoid using any music except what YouTube gives in their YouTube library. There's a YouTube library inside YouTube studio. Just download music from there and you will be fine. Right? So unless you're a musician, uh, don't bother with, you know, creativity around music or using anything else. Um, yeah, pretty much that's it. I think we've covered a lot of what not to do. For brands, hey, uh, if you weren't convinced that... Uh, Content marketing is a great thing. Hey, remember Red Bull, right? Aren't they doing great? But also look at the other brands, right? Bro and 1MG. These guys have millions of followers now on YouTube. They're doing really well. Shorts. Um, we have done some experiments with shorts. It's, it's still evolving, but it's extremely popular. 
shorts are extremely popular on uh, youtube and um, we think that you should not mix long form content and short form content in the same channel so if you want to try and create shorts content do it on instagram and a dedicated shorts youtube channel and keep your long form content on your main youtube channel on your main youtube channel occasionally you come you can come up with a short content which is in line with the audience which you have already created on that channel but if you start a channel with shorts and long form content something will go viral in shorts which will bring in subscribers who will not engage with your long form content and we have seen a few channels sort of die very early because of that problem but uh, if you are already a popular channel maybe some shorts videos occasionally which is related to your domain would probably only help you not hurt you at this point i want you to take out your phone scan this qr code and if you are interested in um being a creator youtube there's a small group of interested folks like my folks whom i have together on a whatsapp group we talk about youtube answer our questions after this session if you have any questions or that offer which i gave you to uh, check up on your audio clip this group could be the place where we organize it's a low frequency group no spam uh, just meaningful questions which you may ask occasionally we share news over here so you could uh, if you want to be on this group you could just scan this code um this is only for the attendees here so i reset the link after every session i do so this won't last very long see that was my subscribe call at the 20th slide uh, so uh, that's probably a good way of doing um a subscribe call on a youtube video as well probably you'll do it in the first one minute still okay after this we are going to look at something very interesting for businesses and that is going to be a lead gen example and a lead gen by by accident in fact i told you about that uh, app download campaign which i ran and it gave you stats around conversion let me give you another one which is mind boggling which is like crazy which has resulted into massive whatsapp spam for me and that one is this so my wife is a youtuber and she um uh, is a singer so she created uh, she bought a new harmonium and uh, she un did a unboxing video for that harmonium and a lot of people started to ask her in comments where did you buy this harmonium from so she started putting some amazon links giving the phone number of the vendor i said hey don't do this come on i have been an affiliate marketer all my life let me make a whatsapp link for you give it to them and it will initiate a chat with one of my office numbers and i give a Uh, the pre-filled text over there is hi. I'm interested in inquiring about Harmonium. The moment I get an inquiry like that, an automated response which I just do a keyboard shortcuts goes to them to tell them hey X Y Z, and then it's passed on as a lead to the Harmonium vendor. I have had hundreds and hundreds of messages. You will see multiple messages on the same day from people asking about where can I buy this Harmonium from. which is fascinating to me as a marketer that hey people watch a youtube video around the product unboxing that video has no call to action around buying a harmonium it's just an unboxing video it's a innocent video and wow people in the comments and description box are looking for buying a harmonium and they are asking questions and clicking this whatsapp link and chatting with me right so this has worked very well the conversion has been very good um i don't have very scientific number over here because hey it was not the link was not there for the entire duration and i haven't really done the math on views to uh, this but the conversion rate is way more than the app downloads doesn't it's great it's, it's just crazy so whatsapp chat link has worked well it's only up to your imagination what else could do well at this point while you digest this let me look at the questions again okay so maria shots i think i have covered the shots part over here maximum length i am telling you even 60 minutes is fine if you are teaching something which is really art like how to make a good youtube thumbnail on canva could easily be a 30 minute video where i show you by creating five thumbnails and refining them on uh, this yes maria you want to ask um a follow on i was just asking whether um, so the short form content which is very popular in instagram but instagram doesn't pay the creators youtube yeah. is known for that fact that for yeah. views you get paid so yeah. they yeah. might plan to have um, 
so i mean the yeah. chances of your instagram content will not go to waste in case you plan to you know go to youtube and do shorts there but so no the i am not aware of the uh, market the there that the yeah. youtube is doing so the commercial yeah. value of short 10 second 15 second content is very low it's monetized also much poorly right now tiktok and youtube both do a creator fund and give some chanda to the creators Uh, mm-hmm. YouTube has publicly said the head of YouTube Neil Mohan has publicly said that they are coming up with an ad product where they will do revenue share with creators. They are figuring on how to make it happen. But mm-hmm. I must tell you that uh, short form content. Just imagine one short form content, as in shorts video, is probably fifteen to twenty seconds. Mm-hmm. An average video over here, I am saying, should be three to four minutes. Mm-hmm. Just for the amount of time you have held the audience, you are already down probably what. Atx or something, hmm. and uh, it's not like the ad rates are very good either way. And after and th- th- apart from that, you also know that the it's a lot of frivolous and entertainment content which is going to go there on shorts, which is again not very high paying. So the amount you will get paid will be very low, as in for a million views, probably a hundred dollars or fifty dollars, which is very poor, right? right? So you don't want to look at that. In contrast to that, let me show you this. Three lakh fifty thousand views, four hundred and twenty dollars on a very basic uh, career-related topic. Mm. This is not why I'm showing you this slide. I'm showing you this slide because look at the first hundred and nineteen days. Didn't I feel like shit after the first four months of creating this content that my life is going nowhere and I'm becoming a you know trying to become a YouTuber? You will feel so in the first few months, right? Now look at number seven, you know day seven one four. Right, it takes time for uh, views on a video to accumulate, and a video for YouTube to figure that hey, this content has good engagement for all that whole uh, flywheel to set up. Let me show you a more extreme example. Right, look at this one video. Right, again, similar views, just over three lakhs. The ad rate is slightly lesser, but the video length was slightly more as well here. Look at number three thirty three. At the end of three thirty-three days, I will feel very bad about this video. It's still in line with my channel average, right? That's a year. <laughs> look, look at <laughs> day four, four, four. It's just time to pick up, and then look at day six, 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 right? In our experience and analysis, no short video has this kind of a uh, lifespan. When I say short video, I mean three minute, four minute. You have longer videos, seven minute, eight minute, ten minute, twelve minute, thirty minutes can pick up even after a year and. Establish itself. Short content, three minutes, four minutes. It will either work or not work, and it will die. Even for shorts, it dies very quickly unless it's a legendary shorts. It right. uh, starts giving you traffic after two days. It gives it to you for a month or so, and then it dies off. But this is long term. There is no reason why this content till my channel is alive for the next ten years will keep going in a similar trajectory and keep making money. This is golden. Imagine if you. If this was a business video, if this was the Harmonium video with a CTA inside it, or if this was a video with an app install CTA inside it, and five percent of these users would have installed the app, it's fifteen thousand downloads. That would have been the commercial value for a business. Think in those numbers. It's taken hey, sure, sixty-six days, but hey, my effort was only two hours to create this video end to end. And look at the results: two hours of organic content creation, and I have fifteen thousand downloads. Of course, this is not what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to create a hundred videos because only twenty mm. of them, or ten of them, or five of them will bring most of your views. But this organic flywheel, once set, will keep paying you for a long, long time. Even if you want to be an individual creator and make a career out of this, um, it's tough. It's competitive. Probably you don't want to do it as your primary job full time, but you could make. Two or three videos every weekend, and try your hands at being a creator. Try your hand at being a creator, right? This okay. is very good cash flow to make if you can right. establish yourself in a certain niche. So, um, I want to tell this to all of you. Please, banado video, right? Make those videos out. You know, go out there, make those videos. And I put this note to self over here because I'm not telling this to you. I'm not asking you to persist. I'm saying this to myself so that I keep making such content. With that, yeah, pretty much end of the session. Uh, I've I've tried to cover a lot of things. I think it, uh, but yeah, open to questions. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, so, Ankur, I've got like series of question. I'll, <laughs> you know, I'll just like limit to only three questions. So, first okay. thing is that, you know, um, we've seen a lot of these reaction videos where, you know, um, like, you know, they like say that, you know, we want to make like a reaction video to say startup like the this thing, uh, Shark Tank. But, you know, if we have like those clips, will we get like a strike from YouTube for using yeah, so in uh, Indians are a little, uh, as in Indian uh, cinema or music creators can be a little brutal there. But I've seen a lot of reaction videos where what you could do is show the clip only for a few seconds, five, six seconds, and then give a reaction on it. Uh, it, it totally depends on the production house. They may give you a strike, they may monetize that video, or they may share the revenue with you, or they may just take down your video. It really depends. But uh, if it is fair use, where you are not uh, using too much of that clip, um you could do it but it's 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 thin ice it's it's risky try with one video if you get a strike or something or if it goes badly don't do it or see how others are doing it and try and keep the format same i've seen some youtubers there's this guy shivam who does reaction videos on uh, tiktok videos uh and at times he show plays a few songs and stuff and he try, likes to keep it at nine seconds or 19 seconds or something but i do not play it internally at video school we have a if you're using anyone else's copyright of footage, uh, we try and use footage where nobody's face can be seen. Uh, that, that can get complicated where there's no music, but even still we limit it to four seconds. Below five seconds, generally uh, a copyright strike cannot be given is our belief. Okay. But All it's right. difficult. Those uh, There are some good reaction videos in India. You will have to see what's the appetite of that industry for which you are making. Got it. The second question is that, you know, I've seen some uh, YouTube creators using their own uh, subtitles, but not the YouTube yeah, yeah. generated subtitles. Yeah. Why do they do that? I've seen a lot of that on Instagram. Um, I think a lot of them got in the habit of doing it before YouTube made the captions product good, but I really don't know why they do it. Maybe it looks more aesthetically better than the YouTube captions, but I have not played with captions. Unfortunately, I make Hindi videos and putting English captions on them is very expensive task uh, from a editing perspective and YouTube does not do it automatically either. So. I haven't had much experience with that. Got it. Got it. And the third one is that, you know, I mean, you said that like to create one video a day for 60 days, right? Yeah. Uh, it's not difficult. I know it's not difficult, but, <laughs> but what is the, like the, the sweet spot? So, okay. So ultimately you want to reach a point where you can be active weekly on your channel, at least two videos a week. Okay. But when you start your channel, you need to start with some momentum. So maybe start posting your videos after you have 20, 25 videos ready. Got so it. that you can maintain some momentum. You may only shoot it on Saturdays. You may only shoot three videos a week, but make a um, uh, make some videos before you launch your channel. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. And that is like around 30 videos or something. And then you can yeah. start posting. Yeah. Got yeah. it. All right. Yeah, that's it. I've got questions. Go ahead. Right. Uh, so I have like a couple of questions. Um, one of them is um, how would you suggest a brand have multiple channels for a different type of content yes. or would like one channel, one no, hundred percent multiple small channels. Okay. So, uh, you as sketch note, you may have a startup channel talking about startup and, uh, startup news and startup uh, controversies and startup, uh, fundas and leadership gyans and interviews and podcasts. You may have another channel for, uh, note taking and productivity. Those two, uh, could combine occasionally you could put one content there one, you know, as in uh, a different subject here and there and see if your audience engages with it but they could be two different channels right but you know we've seen that you know people have like different uh, playlists yeah and so so uh, uh, so youtube is increasingly getting better at throwing the right content in front of you but if um, if you have say 10000 subscribers on a channel and uh, if all 10,000 subscribers are interested in the 101st video you post versus only 2,000 of them being interested in the new content you post, the engagement metrics of your channel will look very different. How many returning viewers are, um, uh, basically how close knit of a community can you build? Uh, that has, uh, that is the highest quality YouTube channel is the one which is a very close knit community. Arguably any finance channel, where every video is about finance investment and the same theme is great. But when you talk about say career, 
I may make specialized videos as we're talking about HR today that, hey, these are HR related content. And then when I make customer support related content, those two audiences don't talk to each other very well. And uh, if you have many such fragments on your channel, it's hard to balance it and sort of, uh, you know, have a, you know, uh, should I call it compounding or have very good uh, tailwinds from your older content to your newer content. That is harder to build. So I like to have many different channels, preferably with different type of creators as well to see what sticks I have seen. And we have launched like tens of channels, uh, right? So in the same niche at times, we have over five channels. And I've seen same keyword, same length of uh, content, same uh, playbook from our side to promote that video. And one video or one channel does great, one channel does okay, just because the creator were different. And people engage with every creator in a different way, right? Uh, so uh, you can't predict the audience reaction as well. And for that reason, also having multiple channels is a good idea as a brand. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my last question is, uh, yeah. is there a generic first good video that you suggest with, that people uh, go with, whether they are like... So Your first 30 or 40 or 50 videos could be extremely search-based, things people would be searching for, troubleshooting or tutorial types. Tell me a nation, I can help you brainstorm the topics. Got it. Okay. I, ha I have a question about uh, uh, podcasts. Like, does it make sense to record... So, because Sketchnote has a podcast as well, does it make sense to record them and then also use them as a YouTube video? I just spent the last three seconds focusing on your name, Mr. McAdams, and <laughs> I will allow you to speak. So, can you please ask your question again? <laughs> I am Mr. McAdams, okay? <laughs> Don't yell at me. welcome. <laughs> I, am not, I am not the TV anchor, Ravi. <laughs> So, sorry, just uh, about the podcasting. So we are doing a, a podcast at uh, Sketchnote. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, for example, we've, we've interviewed Ron Agan, we've interviewed other people yeah. who are very much focused on startups. Yeah. Does it make sense to record those uh, podcast sessions and then uh, upload them as YouTube videos as well? <clears throat> if you look at Tim Ferriss' podcast, where there are three hour podcasts which have gone on... Uh, um, YouTube and they do very well. In fact, I listen to a lot of podcasts and some of those podcasts, which are hour long or more, I listen to them on YouTube. Uh, it works. Okay. Uh, the, the thing is, uh, the other thing you could do with podcast is cut out a few five to 10 minute segments from that podcast and spin it off as smaller sub clips and also create maybe 30 second short videos from some very punchy line, which someone says. 30 or 40 that's, that's short videos. So cut out some vertical videos from that as well. Zencaster uh, is the tool I use for recording a podcast. But the Zencaster. best way, to, yeah, the best way to do it, uh, especially if you want video as well along with it, is ask if the other person is also equally capable to ask them to be with you on Zencaster, but also record themselves with a dedicated camera. It could just be an iPhone on a tripod, so yeah. that way they can send you full HD footage. Uh, right. demanding 4K footage from someone will be too much, but yeah, full HD they could send you, which will be much more clear and which will allow your editor to mix mm. several camera angles, one from the main laptop camera, one from the other camera. So there'll be a total of four camera angles to switch between. And the more dynamic the scene is and the screen is switching, uh, it's uh, it will hold people's attention for a longer period as in, in a more rich manner. As in the, the drop-offs will be lower because there's always something changing on the screen video won't be as monotonous because of camera angles. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, Ankur, I had a quick question. Yes. So uh, when you're building content on, on certain domains, uh, so for instance, like we are, we are a DevOps company, right? So, so we, we should, we talk a lot about dev tools or, or any of that. Uh, yeah. Basically it's content for engineers. Uh, how much should you consider SEO keywords and, and, Basically, because at some point we'll have the videos on our on our website as well, and there's going to be a lot of cross-platform uh, 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 promotion of yeah. of that. Um, yeah. So while building content, how much should you consider these SEO keywords based on trends? Where should you include them? Description is definitely one place where where it might make sense to do so. So is there any are there any like do's and don'ts around that? Um. 
So yeah, I, from a YouTube perspective, your title, thumbnail, and uh, video content is enough. I do like to research uh, in terms of what will be a good title to have, what will be a good description to have. I like to add all different types of um, keywords um, okay. in the description. So the same thing could be referred with many different keywords, right? Um, so like to do an SEO, right? I'll have enough keyword variants inside your description. So I do like to do right. that because I think it gives, it makes the job of YouTube easy to figure mm -hmm. whom should they recommend this content to. So why not make it easy for them? So diligently fill out their tags, fill out the description, keep it as detailed as you can. Uh, there are times when I'm showing some content inside the video and I tell them that, hey, this entire text, which I'm showing you is in the description and I paste it in the description because it's easy for people to copy. So use Got the it. description box. Right. Got uh, it. Maybe a small signal, but uh, don't, uh, as in, there is no reason not to properly optimize it. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Hi, Ankur. I had a couple of questions. Yes. So, uh, one is uh, I have actually, I think, those are three questions, but I'll just okay. ask. Uh, one is uh, when you have a startup idea, since now that this is also a startup yeah. plus YouTube kind of a yeah. platform, uh, yeah. you have a startup idea, but you're still playing around with it. You're not sure exactly what you yeah. want to do it, do with yeah. it. So when we start a YouTube channel around that, uh, like what is the importance of having an introduction uh, video when you're still sure? Can you just start off with uh, information around that concept? while you're playing on the idea to do like what is the concept do an intro video only then do the following videos so if you could just throw some light on that right so uh, i don't uh, so here's the thing every video stands on its own so you're assuming that someone will come to your channel watch the intro video and then watch your other videos that is probably not the way the user will flow okay. so here is what you should do you should find 50 independent topics in the same area so say you're starting a healthcare startup, you're making say a practo. Uh, and so you start talking about creating videos around what is vitamin D3, how to test vitamin D3 levels, how to test for vitamin D3 levels, what are normal levels of vitamin D3 levels, what to do if your vitamin D3 levels are low. All of these are, okay. this, this is a great set of uh, video uh, topics because everyone who watches one of these videos is interested in the other four. And all of them together can drive okay. uh, traffic to your app or a practo. And uh, tomorrow I may make video around heart condition or liver or whatever else. But at least there is one small group of vitamin D3 videos, which will allow users to come back, which will give YouTube something to throw at my returning users, uh, right? My viewers who have already engaged with some content. Let's give show them something very closely related to that topic. Mm -hmm. So th this is the way you could think about your content that make mm -hmm. very full concentrated groups okay. of topics which are related to each other and they may uh, differ with, uh, as in they may be extension of each other or they may even be some overlap. That is fine. 20% okay. of the content may overlap over here. Okay. Another question is uh, with respect to CTA, like uh, I don't have an app. I haven't yeah. developed my yeah. website. I, know. I yeah. don't have yeah. any of those things that I want yeah. my audience to do. Yeah. So what should I tell them? Like what Very CTA? I just want uh, to build know, a know, community. I know. Like, no, that's so here's what you should do. <laughs> if you are putting yourself in front of the camera, this is something I have not done for my channels, but I should have done this from day one. I should have asked everyone to follow me on Instagram and I should have had a public Instagram account where I shared graphics and stories and stuff because my diehard fans will come in to start subscribing on Instagram from day one. And whenever okay. I launch something, they will probably learn it from my Instagram and not my YouTube. So make that audience into, tell them to sign up for a newsletter, follow you on Instagram. There are a lot of other things you can do from day one. You shouldn't lose those opportunities. Um, okay. There, there are some more things you can do as well, right? Um, I remember I told you um, that when I create a HR video on salary slips, I will tell them that, hey, I've made another video on how to create a salary slip. It's in description. You can also add one more line over there that, hey, 
some more important information will be kept in description to check it out. And that is future proof. You can put anything in description later on. You're just training your audience to look at the description. This is a super tip. I don't share it. Okay. <laughs> So when you say that uh, we can we can talk about our Instagram or that will be also new, of course, Instagram or Twitter or any yeah. other thing yeah. on the YouTube there? channel, right? That yeah. I'm there and you can follow yeah. me there, etc. Okay. So okay. what happens on Thanks. Instagram and Twitter and newsletter is you have some amount of push capability as well. On YouTube, you have zero push capability. Okay. Right. Uh, Instagram story. Right now, I've done three videos. I'm good. Okay. Sorry, I think there's a time lag. Uh, sorry about that. So um, I did three videos post our last uh, webinar that I had attended the session and I got zero views. Like only my father watched it. <laughs> I didn't get any other views. So I'm just uh, wondering if somebody is sure, even sure, sure. watching my video. It's so let's do this. Discovered. Let me, let's, uh, let's connect next week. I'm just WhatsApping you my Calendly. Let's book some time. I will do a one-on-one -on -one review for your channel. And uh, okay. uh, hopefully I can help you figure how to grow this channel. Okay. Thanks. Sounds good. Yes, Shrek, you wanted to ask something. Yeah, yeah. so uh, a, stu a stupid question, but you know, yeah. I uh, there is a lot of anger with, inside me and uh, especially towards like VCs and angels in India and yeah. that kind of stuff, you know. And I've been thinking that, you know, I, 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 you know, I'm turning 40 and I, you know, and that kind of stuff. And I want to do like an expose of like, uh, of fake investors or shady investors in India and that kind of stuff, because I don't yeah. give a, shit yeah. that shit about yeah. anyone whatever and yeah. that kind of stuff yeah. but yeah. there's one thing right you know i don't want to do it in english because i've seen yeah. because you know i will i will swear a lot and that kind of stuff but you know i wanted to see because that youtube algorithm does it give a strike if you swear in hindi i haven't seen that see carry have you seen carry minati people yeah exactly it. right he just yeah. every second word is a yeah. Yeah. is a swear word so right you may still want to do it through rati style to be popular but if you uh, don't care about being popular and just want to put it out there uh, you can do it uh, as a rant as well, but uh, the way to channel this anger into a productive YouTube channel would be your, you know, um, share your startup learnings and you have uh, more than a decade of learnings there. So share that in Hindi. No, no, I'm Rathi kidding, style. I will do that. <laughs> yeah. So Dhruv Rathi style. Karo. Do it Dhruv Rathi style. Structure your videos, be passionate and be aggressive, but do it Dhruv Rathi style. Got it. Got it. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what, but you know, that's what I wanted to say that, you know, how, how much does that the language matter? Yeah. I think after Shark Tank, Hindi startup videos in India will do well. In okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Share a lot of old photos as B-rolls in those videos. Got it. All right. Okay. Sounds great. Perfect. Okay. Final couple of minutes. Probably, probably anyone has a question. Okay, I don't want to put the pressure of final couple of minutes. <laughs> Just think about it. Take your time. Ask me anything you like. So, I mean, just just uh, for sketching it again, like, um, yeah. you know, uh, I mean, how much of uh, effort we, we should make uh, or B2B kind of company like Sketchner should yeah. be making on, yeah. on YouTube versus other advertisement channels or um, you know, like uh, uh, all the channels, I mean, not just for advertisement, but for content creation. Yeah. So what are the other channels which you think will work well for Sketchnote? Say again, sorry. What other channels, uh, what other user acquisition channels or engagement channels do you think will work well for Sketchnote? So for, I mean, for B2C, uh, we are using uh, mostly SEM right now, Google, like for uh, yeah. paid paid search. Yeah. Then for organic, we're using SEO, um, yeah. and social media, basically. Th those are yeah. the main things. Yeah. With campaigns, yeah. like, uh, you know, we we'll launch yeah. campaigns with specific uh, objectives. Yeah. yeah. So um, 
have you seen skillshare the are you aware of skillshare yeah yeah they do very good influencer marketing so dr ali abdal and uh, vector the, the rene ricci apple um uh, apple channel they they go to some really high quality influencers and get them to do something with their mkbhd so they go to these people and do very good integrations with them if you can find say gary tan and others who are popular around the startup space on youtube and do very good collabs with them uh as a brand uh, that could uh, be very useful for sketch note i'll give you here is so uh, a, of course have your own youtube presence that's cool from a paid perspective here is how you should evaluate which channels to go and approach one way to do this is to find people who have organic following as an influence like gary tans of the world and kbhds of the world and you know that they have very good following organically but mm-hmm. another approach or another kind of um uh, uh approach will be to search for content which your users will be searching for which you you know and say how to do good note taking or legal documents for startups and see which channels have lot of views around those topics go to them and advertise with them and get a video in there somehow because what happens is they already say have 200000 people who have seen a similar video on their channel the moment they put another video which is around the same subject on their channel youtube has a good reference point in their case to go and market the same content to relevant audience so those videos will likely do better those little videos will definitely uh, have a edge over their other videos and again not all videos on a channel works right the pareto principle applies so how do you improve your chances by going to a creator who already has popular content in your niche specifically around the topic you will make your video on that's a great idea thank you you are welcome ankur sir when i have another question yes, just please. in general for youtube so youtube is just one of the only platforms which has a like and a dislike button right yeah so how important are those for your engagement like it does the dislike affect yeah. your engagement so, at all so i tell people that if you don't like my video please click dislike any interaction is good interaction if they comment uh, if someone co- comments on my channel i go back and reply to them and i encourage them to as in i have had exchanges with people where the other people person is very passionately debating something with me and i will also very honestly debate the same topic with them and there will be a 10 comments thread over there it is very good signal for the youtube algorithm and for your other viewers and if you go back and check after a few months i would see that some of my replies to him has a lot of likes because each comment on youtube also can get a like and you will realize that wow right people are at least reading the comments if they are not writing so it's very good engagement for the dislike button particularly i use it as a signal to see how good was my content so if i'm reviewing a channel and if it's not doing well i like to see is the dislike ratio too high did people really dislike this content that is one signal generally you are aiming for 95% plus positive uh, as in you know thumbs up but if it's more than 10% dislikes or 20% dislikes at times you want to consider what went wrong there may be topics which are popular but they are polarized topics and they may get dislikes those are fine but for general informative educative videos i only use it as a signal to see if the content was good or bad but i don't think that a dislike by itself means that youtube will um downgrade your content it may take it as a signal that hey this person does not like this content but the context could be so uh, different like you know this carry minati roast which uh, kunal kamra had done was the most disliked video on youtube but it is very popular as well it was disliked because karim nadi fans wanted to dislike it and dislike attacks happen very often in an organized way also so uh, i wouldn't worry about people disliking my video in general but i will take it as a signal thank you You're welcome Okay guys uh, I guess uh, that's it I'm very happy to do this again I guess uh, a lot of you are on the WhatsApp group also now so uh, thank you uh, I think the conversation can be um, kept going this month in March I'm planning to do a few tear downs like the offer which I made to Aarti that we'll do a one on one review uh, for her channel Aarti is an ex colleague so I'm more than happy to do that for any time but even for the larger uh, community which we are curating at creator folks we will i'm planning to do and me and karambir my business partner we're planning to do a tear down together uh, so that uh, uh, so you will probably have from the whatsapp group have an invite for it and we'll probably 
call for three or four channels from the audience, make them share their screen and look at their metrics and sort of do a live review of the channel. So that could be a good follow on to this session. So I'm looking forward to do that sometime in March. Yeah, super interesting. Great. Great guys, Amazing. this was fun. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Ankur. Really great. Awesome. Really, really informative. Thank Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Take care. Thank you.